Welcome to Pouring Out Music and another episode of Words and Lyrics, where we feature artists and interview them and let them play a song later on. If you want to go ahead and skip to that performance, click here. Today, our guest is the great... Phil Houston, that's me. I, uh, so great, apparently. What? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm Phil. I'm from the Revolutioners. I, uh, uh, front man, singer, person for that band, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we always like to talk about uh, how you get into music and how you really got into this life, basically, that you're into. So Okay, because uh, I, I know you all want to know about my, you know, life's history. I uh, got a guitar when I was 15. My dad told my dad I wanted to play guitar, and he had me like this really horrible harmony guitar, like, in two days later, right? Uh, thanks, Dad. I appreciate that. It's probably the worst mistake you've ever made. First love was the Beach Boys. Uh, love that stuff, you know. Want to play guitar? Did that? Then, then all the rock and roll and all the other stuff that you get into, you know. Uh, Aerosmith was my next love, and and uh, had a even had a truck in high school. Just had a uh, the back glass was completely taken up oh, with an Aerosmith great. symbol. So, <laughs> and then uh, Stone Temple Pilots. A big Scott Wallen fan, and uh, I'm just a fan of frontmanisms. I mean, how can you not like David Lee Roth? And you know. Uh, all those guys that you know set the forefront. Now, speaking of frontman, this guy's a really good frontman. He's one of the best in the area. So, what is Thank it you. like? What is the life of a frontman? Like, what are some things that people don't think about, or some troubles uh, with it? Or? That's a good question. Um, well, you know, I think the biggest concern I have is, uh, if, you know, it's one thing to sit there and sing, uh, and it, if you sit there and sing, you can, you can, you know, hit your notes better. You know what I mean? And you know, you really control your breathing. Um, so. Uh, there, that's the big difference, I think. If, if you're running around on stage and you're trying to entertain people and do that thing, you know, your cardio is up. You gotta have it up and you gotta be able to, you know, hear and sing and do all that stuff. So um, that's one of the most difficult things because it's, um, you want to sound great in your performance, right? But you have to somehow uh, compromise where you're putting on a show and you still, your vocals are still good enough for the show. It'd be one thing if I sat there all night and sang, but. You know, it's it's just people want to see something. You know, nobody wants to see a band that just sits there unless they're like. In, I, I well, I, I take that back. It just depends on the band. My band, the Revolutionaries, were rock and roll. It just I'd have to be that guy. So you just got off a tour with uh, Saving Abel and some other bands. Uh, yeah. Do you have any stories or anything you'd like to talk about that? I mean, I had a really great time as far as I learned a lot of things. It was really educational. Um, those guys are they're, they they're very nice and eager to help you for the most part. Believe it or not, they're not you know they're not assholes or. Or anything like that. Um, you know, we toured with the band called Brother Gray. Super nice, uh, and they just a lot of education there. Um, lots of crazy things happen, I guess, on tour. Not for us. I mean, we, we had a couple of incidences. I got I got left in Lafayette or Lafayette. I don't know what you Cajuns call it down there. I'm sorry. Uh, I went to go get breakfast, you know, and I didn't tell anybody I was leaving the bus because the bus doesn't leave till you know almost nine or ten o'clock, right? So I'm getting up at six and I go down to this little cafe and. I'm doing my thing. I've got my, you know, paper and I got the news on. I brought my laptop. I'm, I'm doing my thing. Come back with coffee in hand, you know, and the bus is gone. There's nothing but a piss jug left, <laughs> and, and that is it. So I see Saving Abel's bus, and then I don't see mine. So I had to cook about 30 minutes. To come back and get me. It was a real uh, almost famous moment. Absolutely right. I guess. All right. Uh, tell us like your worst musical experience. Oh well, probably the one you're gonna hear sh shortly will be pretty terrible. Uh, I guess the worst would have to be uh, that's a high school story. Yeah, um, always a high school story. Uh, you know, believe it or not, I was a, a bit of a, a nerd in high school, and still am at heart. Um, don't let this super cool persona fool you. Still a dork. Uh, anyways, you know, I was just starting to play guitar, right? I think I was like 17 years old, and uh, you know, I had my chords down and stuff like that. You know, you can pretty much get guitar tab and just, you know, cowboy chord your way through stuff, you know, it's just it's how a lot of acoustic guys do it even these days, but I guess what I'm getting at is uh, we had this school assembly, it was called a cafetorium, that's where you had your cafeteria and the auditorium, they were together, it's called a cafetorium, all right, and uh, so there must, everybody shows up to these uh, uh, these little functions or whatever, and I happen to be in choir, and I can't sing harmony, I can't, I'm, I'm like the worst harmony singer ever, and uh, Joe can attest to that, pretty terrible, and uh, Anyway, so I just played guitar for these little songs or whatever that they had, and I uh, had the assembly. There's like three, four hundred people. It's packed in there because everybody and their mama came out and all that other good stuff, and all the kids from elementary school to twelfth grade are in there because we're such a small school. I'm from Palestine, Arkansas. It's like maybe eight hundred people in the school. 
I mean, in the town, not in the school. Okay. Uh, that tells you how many people are, you know, not in the school. Only God Knows Why was the song that we had to do. We had to perform, right? Well, they changed the key on me because they'd been gone for two days because I didn't like it when they didn't tell me about the change in the key. So when it was my time to show low, you know what I'm saying? Because they, they had a piano player doing all the parts, and all they wanted was, a, you know, a nice, you know, acoustic thing in the middle. I mean, I mean uh, uh, yeah, it, you know, acoustic solo in the middle. They changed the key on me. I didn't, you know, my ear is not that good. I have to know ahead of time, and I just botched that really big. So I got this everybody laughing because you, you tell it's terrible. Because you, you only imagine, I mean, hell, I can't get, play guitar now. Can you imagine what a 17 year old me sounded like? Uh, but, you know, delusions of grandeur, you know, it's always been my problem. Oh, yeah, it gets worse. I challenge uh, Jeff Cagle, the principal, to a guitar off, right? <laughs> this dude, this we always we always clash, man, you know, authority. I was an anarchist then, but. Um, he did uh, Every Light in the House is On, I think it's a Garth Brooks tune or yeah. something. And he does this, ah, uh, you know, country falsetto in the middle, and everybody just like, woo! You know, I'm like, oh man, he picked one of them numbers. I didn't, because, you know, oh, Jesus. So, I, you know, I came prepared though. And uh, there's this little uh, group called Barn. B A R N stands for badass redneck or rednecks because there's a group of them, right? Those, those guys were really nice to me. I like those. I like those those guys. Um, and I, did, I knew this was going to happen, right? So ahead of time, you know, they're like their 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 national anthem is "A Country Boy Can Survive" by Hank Williams Jr., right? Mm. So they get up there, right? You know, you know, you know, down 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 I mean, it goes to shit pretty quick, and I just like, what? Why am I the dork, the nerd, who's not in barn, mind you? Uh, why am I not messing this up? And you guys don't know your own national anthem, guys. <laughs> they exited stage back. There was an opening in the back. We just all left and went out the back in front of 400 people in my hometown. This dork, Errol Smith sticker on the back glass. Can't get laid. Add to it. It's just, it was so embarrassing. Uh, don't call out your principal at a school assembly. That's the lesson learned right there. Lesson learned. Next time, Jeff Cagle. Next time. <laughs> oh, I'm red just thinking about it. <laughs> okay, now now that you've experienced Phil Houston here, uh, get ready for a great performance by this guy. I know it's going to be good. I'm Phil Houston, and the song is called Dig.
keep a digging to you do you know that you're the one baby it's true it's always been you what this this is your part oh is it and this is where you do the interview okay. i think uh, um, well, anyway, uh, right. I told you this guy was good. So anyway, uh, tell everybody where they can find you and your music. You can find us at uh, www.therevolutioners.com, facebook.com slash therevolutioners, reverbnation.com slash therevolutioners, where you can just go to Google and type in The Revolutioners, and you'll find us. All right, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and yeah. like and share this video, and check out our new Twitter and Instagram at Pouring Out Music. And until next time, see ya.